Father God, we thank you for this morning. We thank you that you brought us in your presence uh, to study your word, to hear your word. And we pray that through this portion of scripture, God, you will speak to us, you rebuke us. Where we need direction, Lord, you will give us direction. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, thank you, Calvin, for taking the reading. Uh, you did quite well. So, our theme for today is holistic stewardship. Everybody say holistic stewardship. Holistic stewardship. Don't worry, it's not an English test, so feel free. Yeah, so it's, it's our theme, and it's the general cathedral theme. Uh, the cathedral is uh, in, as a cathedral, we are in a mission month, a mission week, sorry. And so we are looking at uh, holistic stewardship as, 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 as our theme. And uh, the word holistic uh, uh, means, for ex okay, let me say, the, a holistic lifestyle is a way of living that lets you look at the bigger picture. Yeah? When God made us, when God created us, he was looking at a bigger, he had a bigger picture in his mind. Yeah? So as we worship him, as we uh, honor him, we are supposed to uh, worship him in a holistic way. Amen. So our theme today is holistic stewardship. We want to look at stewardship in a holistic way, an all-round way. Yeah? So in the psalm that has been read to us, Psalm 24, uh, written by David, uh, it was a song. It is a song, of course, the word of God. If you could um, open there one more time in case you have closed. Psalm 24. Uh, David is saying that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and those who dwell in it. For he has founded it upon the seas and he has established it upon the river. So, David is telling us that the earth is the Lord's. God has created the what? God has done what? He has created the world and the earth and all that is in the world. He has founded it upon the seas. He has established it upon the rivers. And this takes us back to Genesis 1, where we see God creating. It says, in the beginning, God created. And God said, let there be. And God said, let there be. In the gospel according to John, John also tells us in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was what? The word was God. So we need to have an, an understanding that uh, the earth is the Lord's, and God made everything in it. Yeah? And something special that he's saying here, and those who dwell in it, and the people that dwell in it. God made the earth and the people. God made you and me. So we are his property. We are not our own. Amen. Amen. So the earth is the Lord's. In Genesis, the Bible says that out of nothing, God created. So he was not created, but he did what? He created. God did what? God created. And so when you have an understanding that God owns everything, that God owns everyone, that as a Christian, you don't belong to yourself. It is not about you, but it's about God. Then you begin to uh, ask yourself, how then can I live? How then can I worship him? So one thing that God did in Genesis is to give human being dominion, is to give human being charge over everything on earth. So God gave us a mandate. God gave us instruction on how we are supposed to live. Yeah, We are supposed to worship him. We are supposed to submit to him. We are supposed to honor him. We must submit to his lordship, to the lordship of Jesus Christ. So we are simply custodians of what God has entrusted to us. All of us are stewards. We are stewarding what God has given us. Amen. So we cannot live life according to what we want, what I feel like doing. You know, they all... I always see guys posting, like, do what makes you happy, like, do what makes you happy. But if you're a Christian and you know that you, are, you have been entrusted with this life, it is not your own, it belongs to God, you will not do what makes you happy. You will do what is right before God's eyes. Amen. You can clap for that, you guys. You can clap for that. Amen. So when you understand that this life is not yours, it's God's, 
you will not just do anything out of happiness, you know, but you will do it because it is right before God's eyes. Even when you are the only person, the last man standing, you will do it. You will do it. You live in reverence. So you cannot say that you'll do what you want. You know, it, it is my life. It is, it is my future. No, no, no. It is God's. Amen. It is God's. It is not your own. It, is God. it belongs to God. And so if you're making any decision and you're making it up, 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 you, you're making this decision based on your understanding, on your happiness, then you're being selfish and you're falling short of this uh, divine mandate, the divine mandate of stewardship. God has given you this life to give him glory. Yeah, so as you interact with your friends, as you're in class, as you make that decision, as you send that message, as you chat on WhatsApp or on Instagram, what you post, is it in worship before God? David continues uh, in verses 3 to 4. Uh, and he's telling us, if you're there, you can please look into your Bible so that you follow with me. He says, who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in his holy place? Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in his holy place? And he's saying, he's giving an answer. He who has clean hands and a pure heart. He who does not lift up his soul to what is false. And does not swear deceitfully. So, David is giving us a standard. If you are going to be good stewards before God, there is a standard. And that standard is holiness. Clean hands, that is the outward action. And then pure hearts, that is the inward motive of your heart. Why are you doing what you're doing? Is it for you to show off? Is it for you to, to feel good? What is that inward motive? So you're supposed to check yourself inwardly. Holiness is key. Holiness is key. Our God is holy. And as, as we worship him, as we walk this journey, the journey of a believer, we must exercise holiness because our God is holy. And because our God is holy, our sin before him is detestable. You cannot walk with God and then continue to habitually keep on sinning and sinning and sinning. You must commit to holiness. You must commit to pursuing Holiness. Before him, sin is detestable. And when the Bible uh, is giving us instruction on how to deal with sin, you know, it does not say massage, massage sin, uh, you know, just be nice. It tells us to crucify the, the flesh and all its passions. Mortify. Put to death all your lustful desires. So when you're dealing with sin, you don't massage it. You know? You, 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 you don't give reasoning. You know now me, um, I just may I just drink Siminoff. Siminoff is like soda, you guys. It's it's like soda. It's like soda. You, know, you don't give reasoning. If you're dealing with sin, if you're pursuing holiness, you don't give reason. You have to be decisive. Deal violently with sin. You have to be decisive. You don't deal it dally. Uh, you know. Me, secular music, I may just listen to the beat. Just, just the beat. Just, just the beat. You don't give, you have to be decisive because our God is holy and he requires us to walk in holiness. So, as we are stewarding everything he has given us, we are supposed to clothe ourselves with holiness and righteousness, seeking him, seeking his will and not our will. His will must prevail. Unfortunately, God made a better covenant with us. We were helpless. We couldn't help ourselves. But in the book of Ephesians, Paul, Paul, tell, Paul tells us that we were once dead in our transgressions. But Christ made us alive. Christ made us alive. Christ made us alive. So when we take that step and believe in Christ and trust him and walk with him, we have that life, that new life that he gives us, and we are able to practice holiness. Not in our own strength, but through Christ's power, because his spirit is resident in us, it sits in us. Therefore, we bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And so, in verses 5 and 6, uh, David is telling us, there is a reward. 
Yeah? There's a reward for practicing holiness. There's a reward for the righteous. There's a reward. So our living for Christ is not in vain. Even when people look at you as, but this guy also. Even when people feel like are discrediting you, or so long as you're obedient to Christ, so long as you're walking with him, so long as you're practicing what is right, it is not in vain. There is a reward. And David is telling us in verses 5 that he will receive a blessing from the Lord. Righteousness from God of his salvation. So, we receive a blessing, and a blessing is not, um, is not reflected in, you know, having many cars or having an iPhone or having what, but this blessing is righteousness, and righteousness from God. So he received a blessing from God, righteousness from God of his salvation. Verse 6, um, such is the generation of those that seek him, those who seek the face of God. So those who seek the face of God walk in righteousness. Righteousness received from God, imputed by God. We don't earn it, but God out of his mercy gives us that righteousness. And you know, as I said earlier, that this is a song David was singing to God. So in verses 7 and 10, uh, David is making several declarations. Yeah? And I want us to uh, do them together. Are we guys ready for this? So look at verses 7 uh, to 10. So I'm, I'll, be, I'll be reading the first line and then you repeat the, the next lines. Lift up your heads, O gates. Come on, guys, come on. Lift up your heads, O gates. King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates. The king of glory may what? May come in. And who is, the, and who is this king of glory? And who is this king of glory? So our Lord is the king of glory. He is the king of glory. He is imbued with majesty. He is clothed in righteousness. He is the king of glory. So if there is anything in your life that wants to be the king of glory... You need to think twice if you're a Christian. You need to think twice. Is there anything that you want to make the king of glory? Hmm? If you have no data, you feel like the whole world is crumbling on you. Yeah? What is it that you're making the king? Is it money? When you have like a 50K, you feel like the whole world is yours. You can abuse everyone. What is it? This king wants to enter into your life. He wants to enter. He wants to penetrate into your life. He's inv invincible. He's strong. He's mighty. He's the Lord of hosts. He's the king of glory. So he wants to enter into your life. Will you allow him to penetrate every, every area of your life? Holistic. Holistic. Not some, not, not some parts. He wants to penetrate. He wants to walk with you. He wants a relationship with you. Not just a Sunday morning affair or a leftover of your time. He's interested in your full commitment. Not partial obedience. Not leftovers of your time. He desires your full devotion. Not little bits of your life. He desires you to worship him daily even when no one is seeing you. So if you have to be Good stewards, we should let him enter. We should let him enter into every aspect of our lives. We should allow him to enter. We should allow him to be king and lord in our lives. It is easy for you to come here on Sunday and the year ends. Go for camp, you know. Go for a bless. But if you don't have a relationship with God, if you are not walking in holiness with him, it's, it's going to be hard. Yeah? It's going to be hard. And he says, at the judgment they will be crying out, but we worshipped in your name, like we prayed at the teen service, we, you know, I was posting verses every morning. Be like, ah, oh, guy, I don't, I don't know you, I, I don't know you. You know, I was attending church, 
So he requires us to walk with him. He requires us to be good stewards. And we can walk with him daily, discerning his will. When we read his word, when we read, when we study his word, when we reflect on his word, when we meditate on his word, when we saturate our minds with his word of truth, we can be able to discern his will. We can be able to discern how we should walk, what is right, what is wrong. How can I represent God amidst my friends? How can I represent God at night? How can I represent God everywhere I am planted? In that group discussion, are you, are you representing God? Are you being a good steward? As you're handling money, you know, are you, are you, are you handling this money with, with, with rationale, with purpose? Or are you just throwing it? Are you using it to build the kingdom of God? Are you using that knowledge that he has given you to extend his kingdom, to build his kingdom, to build the body of Christ? And you know that God cannot be mocked. He cannot be mocked. He cannot be mocked. He sees, he's everywhere. And so, going into his presence, fellowshipping with him, holiness is a standard. I don't know if you can identify, as I bring this to a conclusion, I don't know if you can identify some areas in your life where he has not entered, where this king of glory has not entered. Is it your relationship with your parents, you know, is it a relationship with your, with your friends, in your hoods, where, where you stay? What areas has this king of glory not entered? Is it with money entrusted to you? Is it with your sexuality? Can we pray? Father God, we want to thank you for your word. That is challenging us to live up to the standard, to live up to your standard, O oh God. Not according to the pleasures of this world, not according to our lustful desires, but Lord, you desire holiness from the inward parts, inwardly. Friends, let me give you an opportunity right now to, maybe you need repentance before God. You come here every Sunday, you, you are part of every program here at church, but you're walking with God is not according to his standard. Will you, will you just repent before God? In his greatness, in his mercy, he's able to forgive us. David says, if I had hidden iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. Maybe it is anger, it is strife. Maybe it is pornography. You can name it, you can name it. Don't look at your neighbor, just close your eyes and look into yourself, inwardly. You've not been a good steward with your body. You've been a yes, yes person. God is able to administer healing for us. And His grace is in abundance. Just feel free before Him. It's between you and God. Between you and God. Maybe you need to crucify those lustful desires. You need to weaken those parts of yourself. You need to weaken those desires. And you can't do it alone. Ask him for strength. Ask him for strength. That you will be obedient. You will be obedient to his word, to his will. You will be obedient to his voice. Maybe you have been living life 
to satisfy yourself. You have been living life out of selfishness, not considering him. You have an opportunity this morning. Tell him, Lord, I'm here. I bow down before you, Father. Cleanse me, cleanse me from the inside. Just keep connecting with God. Ask Him for direction. The right thing to do. Right in His eyes. Not just, not just what makes you happy. Our focus is pleasure, but His focus is glory. He wants glory. He's a king of glory. Nothing less. He is the king of glory. Maybe it is pride. Ask him to break those walls of pride within you. Ask him right now. You can't come here this morning and go back the same way as you came. With that burden that you came with. With that struggle. Lay it before him right now. Lay it before him. Open up. Open up those doors. Open up. And ask him to enter. King of glory, will you enter into my life? Teach me your ways, O oh God. They'll have a mindset that is holistic. A mindset that looks at the bigger picture. That divine mandate. To live a life that pleases God. To live a life that honors God. A life that honors God one another pleasing before his sight and God this morning we want to believe you we want to believe you as our creator as one who has made us for his glory as one who has even given us his image person with us this morning who's going through any struggle, the internal struggle against sin. We know that you are the great God. You are strong and you're mighty in battle. Even that internal battle against sin, you can win it for us through your spirit. Every day, every moment, you can win it for us. Lord, we can stand in holiness and acknowledge you as Savior and King. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you 